Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills number three, Facing. This is a series of quick videos on how to get started in machining. If you like this content, I post exclusive project videos on Patreon, so go ahead and subscribe. There is a link down in the description. Okay, let's dive in. So facing is machining the end of the work on the lathe, and it's generally the first operation you're going to do on any part. The main purpose of it is that it uh, not just makes it look nice, but it's giving you your first reference surface. And what that means is that, you know, you might typically you're going to have like a bandsaw cut or maybe a pinch cut from a shear from the factory on fresh stock. And the point is that even though it might look square and flat, you actually don't know anything about this surface. You know, it might be off by one degree. There might be a low spot in the middle that you can't see. Any unmachined surface is, has to be suspect. You don't know anything about it. After it's machined, we know a lot about it. Now we know it's parallel to this chuck face, it's perpendicular to these ways, and by extension, if we turn the outside diameter of this, we know this angle right here will be exactly 90 degrees. Uh, and once it's machined, then now we can start you know, doing layout off of that. We can take measurements that will be accurate from that surface. So facing gives us our first reference surface on the stock. And before you do any operation on the lathe, it's very important that your tool height be correct. The tool always has to be on center. And uh, an easy way to, to set that up for uh, rookies is to just turn your tool post around and line it up with a center set in your tailstock and uh, just get down real low and eyeball that the top surface of that tool is right on the very center of the end of that. The top surface of this is what's doing the cutting and this guy, this point right here in the live center, you know is on the center axis of the lathe. So if you get those two guys lined up, your tool height is correct. The next thing to think about is the RPM of your spindle. Every material is going to have an ideal surface rate that, uh, that it wants. And so you, need, you, you can do some math on the diameter of the part to calculate all that and so on. But with facing, because we're going from the outside in towards the center, the effective surface speed is actually decreasing. So generally you end up just kind of setting a compromise or for a large diameter part, if you have a lathe with a variable speed control on the spindle, such as this one, you can actually increase the speed as the tool bit gets towards the center. But for, uh, for most, most of the time, you just set a decent compromise. Uh, I'm gonna set it at uh, 500 RPM for this 360 free machining brass. Next, make sure that the angle on your tool post is correct. You want good clearance angles on, on the tool bit that you're using. And you also need to make sure that the cross slide is going to reach all the way to the center. You know, on a lot of small, smaller lathes and uh, hobbyist lathes especially have limited travel on the cross slide. So make sure that your tool is actually gonna reach all the way into the center there before bottoming out on the stops. The next step is to touch off. Remember, we don't know anything about this surface and we don't know where the high spot is. So you want to control your depth of cut at all times. So, if, you know, a good start for a facing cut might be 20 thousandths, but we don't know where 20 thousandths is yet. So uh, an easy way to do that is just uh, put your tool a bit towards the outside edge, uh, because if it's like a bandsaw cut, the high point is going to be on the outside edge. Uh, and then run the lathe and then bring your tool in nice and slow until you hear it start touching off on any part of the work. Let's do that now. Okay, right there, I got a chip on that spot. If I bring my cross slide out a little bit, you can see I'm just getting some chips coming out of there. So we're gonna call this uh, touched off and now we can bring our tool bit out clear of the work and then down here on my hand wheel, I can advance 10, 20 thousandths and then lock that carriage. You always lock the carriage when you're facing, otherwise the cutting forces will push that carriage back out again. So now I know that I'm cutting no deeper than 20 thousandths anywhere on the part. So now I can just start winding this in. And this is always gonna be an interrupted cut at first because again, that surface is not machined, so it's not flat. So generally you're going to do a couple of passes and you keep doing passes until you don't see any more of those saw marks. So after that first pass, shut everything down, but don't move any of the controls because that tool bit is now forming a reference surface and you don't want to lose that position. But I'm going to just turn the stock here by hand to show you what we've got. So you can see how this is all nice and machined. We've got a mirror finish on there. But this over here, you can still see the bandsaw cut marks. So this is how you know we're not quite done yet. So now I can wind this out, go in another 20 thousandths. And again, I know I'm cutting no deeper than 20 thousandths anywhere. And I just keep doing that until everything is mirror finish all the way down.
And this is the result we're looking for. We got a mirror finish all the way across. That part is now faced. But hold on, what if you end up with something like this? I did everything correctly, or so I think, and I end up with a little nubbin right here. Well, what that means is that my tool height wasn't quite correct. If I bring this in, you can see that my tool actually goes underneath that nubbin. So my tool is just a little bit too low. And in fact, facing operations are a really good way to actually just check and set your tool height. If there's no nubbin left over, then you know your tool height is correct. If the tool height is a little too high, you won't get a nubbin, but as you get towards the center, it'll push harder and harder. You'll feel resistance on the cross slide because what's happening is while the tool is cutting up here, the uh, bottom part of the tool is starting to rub down here because there isn't enough clearance underneath. So remember that top surface is doing the cutting. So that top surface has to be exactly on the center line to avoid any rubbing and to avoid any nubbins. So that's facing in a nutshell. It's the first and most fundamental operation you're ever going to do on a lathe. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, please do subscribe on Patreon and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.